Yeah. I know how that is to grow up without a father. So when I first had my, my first son in 1997, I vowed that I would never be the dad like my dad was. So when, when, when I decided to leave Chicago in 2011, I took my kids with me. I took my, I took six of my kids with me. Wow. Like we gone, we gone, you know? And one thing that I respected from, from all of my kids' moms, they asked me when I moved to Milwaukee, just don't have my kids around all your women because they knew how I was. That's what's going that's the that's the icebreaker right there. How do you view this child? Do you view this child and say, this no, this is my son? Rather, 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 before me and my wife even got married, her son, that was already my son. You get what I'm saying? When I started dating her, when when I took my kids school shopping, I took him school shopping. Mm -hmm. When I went for, for his birthdays and things like that. I did the same thing for him that I did for my wife's kid. I mean, for, for, for my kid. Right. Christmases and everything, they got the same thing. Because I didn't view him as, oh, that's my girlfriend, son. No, that's my son. Because first of all, if you don't view all kids as they your children, that's a problem already. I hope that you're the one. And that's are you a content creator youtuber maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really really good or maybe you said something that was really really good well enter opus clips this is the platform that i use when i want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video and it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Blended families. Something that we don't talk about enough, especially in our community. But it's a conversation worth having because there are so many dynamics that play into this. And we have a special guest, guest with us to address this topic. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, inspiring you to love fearlessly. We have a returning guest, and I'm so excited about having him back. He is an author. He's a motivational speaker, father, a phenomenal book we want to talk about as well. We'll have that linked up in the description below. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Wendell White. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm blessed, my brother. I appreciate you having me back on, but I'm blessed, man. How about you? Man, I'm good. Busy, but I'm good. Yeah. Hey, man, that's the best thing to do. As long as you busy, you doing something. As long as you doing something, hey, man, everything else is going to fall in place, you know? Hey, I know that's right. I want to jump on this topic about blended families. Now, of course, there's been a bunch of stuff that's been going on with uh, Cam Newton and Nick Cannon and creating these broken homes and all this other stuff. And are they good dads? Um, it, have you seen any of the, the interviews lately? Well, you know what? To be honest with you, I haven't. Okay. Um, when you reached out to me and asked me about um, being on the show tonight, yeah. um, I kind of went and, and and did my research on mm -hmm. um, the topic that we was talking about. Uh, and man, it's... It's, a, it's it's I'm not going to even say it's that deep because it's really not that deep. Mm -hmm. It's just really your preference. What mm -hmm. what is your preference? 
You know what I'm saying? So especially I'm a I'm gonna talk about myself for for a second. Yes. Me mm-hmm. being a me being a a, a a a man with 11 children by seven different women, right? Mm-hmm. So the way that I was raised, I was raised to born and raised in the city of Chicago. Yes. No real mom, no real dad in my life. So I grew up around, you know, hustlers and pimps and things of that nature. So in my eye, having a bunch of women, it was the thing. That was the, th- that was the thing, you know? And uh, like I said, I got, I got 11 children, about seven different women. And when you, when you going through stuff like that and you really don't really don't even understand what being a man is about, you think that's cool. You think that's cool. The friends that you hang around with, they think it's cool. Everybody think it's cool that you got all these women, you got all these babies, you doing this, you doing that, because that's 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 what's that's the norm in the African American community, especially growing up in poverty. That's the norm. You selling drugs, you getting money, you doing this and doing that. My mindset then changed until I sat down and got a mentor. Mm. I moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I got me a mentor. I got me a mentor. He was he was married. He had been married almost 20 years. Um, he had five children, four of his children uh, was by his wife. His oldest daughter was by his ex-wife, you know. But I'm saying that to say he always tried to do it the right way. Yeah. See, sometimes, see, sometimes if if you in a situation, bro, and you saying when a person is teaching you wrong is right, how do you really know what wrong is? Mm. What is wrong when when I've been taught that the way that I'm living is the right way to live? You know, having 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 four five women and this that and third that was normal. That was that was part of being right. See, if you if you didn't have that. In the community that I grew up with, they considered you a lame. Yeah, you a lame. You know, so even with even with Cam Newton, right? Mm-hmm. Even with Cam Newton, even with Nick Cannon, right? You got to ask yourself this: Is it all on them, or do the women play a role in that as well? Uh oh, because about to step on some toes now. <laughs> oh, no, because 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 check, because check this out, bro. It's it's, it's just reality. Because yeah. you gotta understand this. You gotta understand this. If a man come to you and say, "I want you to be my baby mom," no matter how much money he got, he respects you only as a baby mom. Mm. That's where his respect lies for you at. If he's saying he don't want to be married and he don't want to be committed in a committed relationship and things like that, he looks at you as a baby as a baby mama. Do you you viewing him as his money aspect? You looking at the money aspect of it. But the disrespect came when he asked you to just be his baby mama. Mm-hmm. So why why do he take all the heat from it? When the women share a blame in this as well, because yeah. at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, you got to choose to be somebody baby mama. You got to choose to want to be that. Do you want to be a baby mama? Do you consider yourself? Do you look at yourself and say, I'm a queen. I'm a wife. I don't want to get married, but I'm a wife. It's a difference between getting married and being a wife. Yeah. Anybody can go get married. <laughs> but are you a wife? Do you look at yourself like a wife? Because if you viewed yourself like that, I don't care how much money no joker got, you're not finna let nobody just tell you, oh, I just want to have a kid by you, but I don't want to settle down with you. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to look at it on all aspects. We got to look at it uh, on on all aspects and all perspectives and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking no one that feel that's, if they that's what they they life and that's what they want to do, bro. All hands to you. I don't got nothing to judge on you because guess what? I got seven baby mamas. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Before I knew how to be a husband, I got seven baby mamas. And it was once upon a time when I had the drug money and all this, and I used to look at women and say, "I want you to be my baby mama." Mm. 
because I didn't understand in my mind, I never understood in my mind what it took to be a man at the time. Mm. See, ain't no real man running around talking about they want a baby mama. I want a baby mama. I'm 43 years old. You think I'm, I'm running around here talking about something I want a baby mama? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You you know, but 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 it 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 takes it takes that mentoring, it takes that growth. You yeah. have to be willing to grow as a person because even with Cam Newton. Am I going to agree with what he's doing, Re regardless of what he's doing? I don't agree with that. Mm. I don't agree with that at all, because you can have as many children you want. Why not just get a wife and have children? And, and see, that was the thing with Cam Newton, right? The thing with Cam Newton was because uh, Dr. Brian, when she was interviewing him, she was saying, like, why are you trying to separate the kids from the, the marriage? Because Cam was right. he was basically saying, like, I want a whole bunch of kids, but marriage, you know, he's just kind of like, uh, that kind of thing. So th that so was the thing. So, the so, 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 <laughs> so, so if, 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 if I can sit down with Cam, Cam Newton, I would, my, my question would be to him is why do you despise marriages so much? Mm -hmm. What have marriages done to you? where you despise marriages so much. And I don't want you to look at it from, I, and, and I will tell him this, I don't want you to look at marriages from somebody else's marriage. All right. Don't, don't view, don't view what, what you saw in somebody else's marriage towards you. Why do you despise marriages so much? And nine times out of 10, it's going to always be, well, I saw this, I saw that. But if you've never walked down that road before, if, 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 if you feel like, if you feel like this marriage is wrong, that marriage went wrong, I saw my friend go through this, I saw my friends go through that, why don't you change the narrative? Why don't you change the narrative? Why don't you be the one that fix the problem and say, you know what, I'm going to show y'all that marriages can work. I'm going to show y'all that being a top athlete in, in, in my, my profession at the time when he was a top athlete, you know, one of the biggest names in NFL, I can show y'all how I can do this and I can go home and be faithful to my wife. And my wife ain't never got to worry about somebody calling her, say she got a baby on the side and I was cheating with her. The tabloids ain't saying, man, we caught Cam Newton coming out of the room. Why can't we be the ones to change the narrative? Mm -hmm. So with, with 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 the whole interview, I never heard the, the the doctor lady ask him what was his problem with marriages. Mm -hmm. Instead of drawing down on them, see see one thing about us as men, and you can contest to this: mm -hmm. when we feel like we backed in the corner, we come defensive. Now we defensive, yeah, because we've been defending. We especially as African Americans, we've been. American men, we've been defending ourselves all our life. So we come defensive. So we, we with that being said, she could have she she could have softened him up and he would have opened up to her. Mm -hmm. He'd have opened up to her, but at the end of the day, she still gotta come. Like one thing, I'm a, I'm a big believer in Christ. Yeah. So I live by the I live by, and I was just talking to some people about this earlier. I live by the values of through love and kindness, do I draw thee? Yes. So okay. I can't I can't go back and forth with you about what you believe in, but I can real I can soften you up to see what the real problem is. Mm -hmm. What the real problem is? You a doctor. This is what you went to school for. Don't try to don't try to don't try to down them because you have different beliefs in them. What he believe in and what you don't believe in, but just try to get his perspective because we all got a different perspective in life. That's right. So get to get the get to understand his perspective. And, and, and guess what? We can agree to not agree. Very true. You, you get what I'm saying? So yep. it's like with that, it's like when, when I was watching the interview, and I watched it with my wife. So mm -hmm. when I'm watching the interview, you know, man, her man, her disgusted. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, it's it's just different things different people do. If you choose to be a baby mom. How can I get mad at you? How can the world get mad at this man? Because he's choosing women that's choosing money over respect for themselves. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you got to understand that as a woman, a man is only going to respect you as far as you respect yourself. Yeah. So if, 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 if the respect level goes to you just a baby mama, then you're just a baby mama. If you agree with that, then you got to take everything that goes with that.
Very true. And you have to be willing to take everything that goes with that. Because at the end of the day, he never promised you nothing but a baby. <laughs> That's true. He never promised you nothing. What was what 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 did we sit down and say? What was the commitment? This was the this this is what we're doing. We haven't said until you get pregnant. And man, I just want my kids. Yep. So with with that being said, you can't you can't get mad at that. Mm -hmm. You can't get mad at that, and you can't get mad at him. A person might say, "Well, he he a nothing guy. They, he he just tries." Well, that's your that's your perspective of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. So, so yeah, bro. I mean, that's just that's just my outlook on it. You yes. know, like I don't I don't see nothing that he's doing wrong. I don't I don't that I'm not saying that I agree with it, but that's to each his own. Yes, you know, because I know the Bible that I read say, "Man, one one husband to one wife." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like if I if I had all the, the the understanding and knowledge that I have right now, and I love all of my children, I love all eleven of my children, mm -hmm. but I, I I know for a fact that I wouldn't have as many children, especially by as many women that I have children by. Yeah, let me you know. You. But like I said, growing up, go ahead. No, I, no, I want to ask you around, let's say when you had, uh, say, the third baby mom, what was your approach to her? Like, was, was your approach the same to all the all the moms or were they different? Like as you as you matured or as you got older? Well, you got to understand this, bro. Um. And I in our first interview we did, right? We talked about my book and things, right? Yes. So you got to understand, I always, I've never had Cam Newton money, but I always had a hundred thousand dollars here from drugs, seventy thousand dollars here, you know, always doing illegal things, selling drugs. That was my thing. So you got to understand, it, it every, every, every Every woman desires to be with a man that can provide for them. Yes. Regardless if they can provide for themselves. Yes. Every woman want to be with a man that can provide for them. So when a woman feels secure enough to know that you could provide for them, you can manipulate that in so many ways. Mm -hmm. A man can manipulate that in so many ways, especially a guy that's from the streets like me that got game, that feel like I got game. You can manipulate that in so many ways. So... What, what she's looking at, because guess what? She's coming from a broken home. She's coming from poverty. She's coming for all these things. She don't have nobody in her ear telling her, watch out. Watch out for these type of guys. Go to school, get an education. Go do this, go do that. Guess what? Nine times out of ten, she babysitting the mama kids. She 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 don't got the 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 the, the means to go to school and do what she needs to do. Don't got the don't 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 got the flashy clothes. Don't got this. Don't got that. And guess what? The wolf and sheep skin slide like me. They got that. That I can provide that. I'll give you. Oh, you need some shoes. You need some clothes, man. I can do that. I can, man, I can make sure you get to school every day. And guess what? I'm going to make sure you get to school every day because I want you to be the flies in school and do all this and do all that. I had my first son when I was 16. Mm -hmm. I took care of my son's mom. Mm -hmm. You know, she she didn't, live, she didn't live with her mom. She lived with me and my stepdad. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I took care of her. I bought her the shoes and the clothes and bought her the, the tokens because we lived in Chicago at the time. Bought her the, the tokens to get on the school bus and picked up on motorcycles and things like that. So when you when, when, when you having it that your way like that, and a woman is is if you don't got that mentor in your ear as a woman, and you don't have that 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 real woman in your life that's teaching you like, don't go down this road. Let me teach you. And a lot of times. And a lot of times, bro, men and women, we have those people in our lives, but the way that they deliver the message to us, we had never received it. Yep, that's true. We had never received it. That's true. And, and Wendell, we have a we have a question for you. I have some questions as well, but there's yep. uh, uh, one lady asked from TikTok. She asked a uh, fun lover. She said, as a blended family, are his children's mothers include his wife? Are they all cordial? Now we are. Now we are. But it didn't start off like that. 
it didn't start off like that. Like I've been married 10 years, July 24th of this year. I was married. It made 10 years for my marriage. Congratulations. You know, the, thanks, bro. The, the, the first four or five years was rough. It was rough because not only was it rough on me and my wife, but it was rough on my children as well because when I moved to Wisconsin in 2011, six of my kids I brought to Wisconsin with me without no mama. Mm. I raised them. You yeah. know, so yeah. out of my, out of my, yeah, so I, I raised them. So some things had happened, some things had happened, and I ended up losing everything, and they had to go back to their mother's. And once I got back on my feet and me and my wife were married, mm -hmm. then they came back. But as my wife, she only had one child. So my wife coming to a, a marriage with one child, now she's adopting all of these kids mm -hmm. that she, do, she don't look at things the way that I look at things. Because at the end of the day, I look at them as these are my children. Yeah. I don't I don't care if the, the mama don't send money. I don't care if the mama don't buy clothes. I don't care. I'm going to make it happen because these are my children. Because yeah. I grew up without a father. Yeah, I know how that is to grow up without a father. So when I first had my, my first son in 1997, I vowed that I would never be the dad like my dad was. So when 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 I decided to leave Chicago in 2011, I took my kids with me. I took my I took six of my kids with me. Wow! Like we gone, we gone. You know, and one thing that I respected from from all of my kids' moms, they asked me when I moved to Milwaukee, just don't have my kids around all your women because they knew who I was, mm. and I respected that. And that's the part that that's the part that drew a wedge between me and my wife once we got married, because all the time that me and her was dating, she never was able to be around my children. Mm. You know, and because I was respecting so much of what their mother was saying, I'm not even understanding that this is the woman that. I asked to marry me, but she has never been around me and my children. She has never been around my children. Mm -hmm. So now we got married. It mm -hmm. was like put them all in, and she didn't even know how to handle that because it was too much. Yeah. Wow. So how did the conversation go with, because a lot of times moms, they, you know, they mama bear. They're going to clamp down on their kids. They're going to protect their kids. Uh, and a lot of time, because what you're saying right now is <clears throat> there's a lot of men that can't even get custody of one child. <laughs> right. So how were you able to get your kids let not just live with you, but relocate? Like, how, how did you do that? Because that right there speaks volumes within itself. Yeah, so so the thing about it is, this is what I always believed in. Like, with all my kids, bro, I've never been on child support. I've never been on none of that. You know, never, ever, I with all of my children. So the thing about it, why it was so easy to have that conversation with my kids' mom about allowing the kids to live with me because I've always been there. Mm -hmm. I've always been there. So... It's not like I'm finna go put the kids in harm's danger. I've, I've, I've always been there. I've always been their dad. From day one, I was always their father. I, I I I never played, I never played, you know, I wasn't the weekend dad. And there's no not to weekend dads because it's some dads they can only see their kids on weekend. And I pray God can change that. But I was always, even with my, even with my streets, being in the streets. I was always the one that dropped my kids off at school in the morning. I would go get them from school. So it was nothing that was too, that was going on in the streets was worth more than them. Mm. You know, even, even when we, when we, when we moved to Wisconsin and I had my book released for my book, the devil thought he had me. I was still hustling and doing my thing before I got saved and got converted to Christ. And one of my sons, he spoke at um, my book, 
my book release. And he told the people, he said, I never knew that my dad sold drugs until I read his book. I always thought he had a job. Wow. And But the thing about it is, bro, I was always the type of, I, I witnessed so much as a youngest, as a youngster. So I always looked at certain things and said, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do my kids like that. I'm not going to raise my kids like that. So during, during the day when my kids was at school, I ran the street. When they got out of school at four o'clock, I was dad. I was picking them up from school. I was going home. I'm doing homework with them. I'm cooking. I'm washing clothes. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And we lay down and we go to bed together. Wow. So yeah. th that's 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 how I that's how that's how I raised my that's how I raised my children because I understand as a as an adult, I don't care LeBron James, Michael Jordan, whoever could be your favorite player, but as children. Your mom and dad is going to always be your role models. We're going to always look up to them. And it's whatever way that they go, that's the way that nine times out of ten that you're going to go. If you're not strong-minded enough, if they doing something that you don't agree with, to go the other way. Mm -hmm. Man, you this, know? this is a, I, mean, I, I, I love your story. I want to, uh, I want to kind of save. Uh, when you talk, I want you to talk about your book kind of at the end of the interview, because I'll have it linked up in the description uh, for those okay. to purchase. Uh, I do have another question, though. What were some of the biggest challenges you faced raising a blended family? Because it, it, it seemed like everything came together for you. But was there ever like a challenge that you almost had to question yourself? The 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 um the biggest part was getting my wife to really uh, buy to the plan. Mm. Buy to the plan. Buy to the plan that my children needed her just as much as her son needed her. You know, to get her to understand that it's a reason why I have these children in my custody. It's a reason why, you know, without see, it's a I've never agreed with men or women that have to, you know, degrade the the baby father, the baby mama. To make their point. We we don't have to do that because we all we all got flaws. We right. all have some flaws. So at the end of the day, if if you see me, just like I, I had to explain to my wife, if you see me as a man that got six of his children, that should tell you, that should speak values by itself without you even have to say nothing. <laughs> That's true. But at, but at the end of the day, at, at my wife, why I give her the benefit of the doubt is because she's adopting kids that came into her life. And a person might say, well, she your wife. She should love your children. Well, I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. You have you you have to, in order to fall in love with people, we ain't even just talk about children. You got to be around them. She was never around them. She was never around them. So me trying to me trying to um, pacify my kid's mom, and it really hindered my marriage. Mm -hmm. Once we got married, because now it's like, okay, now that we married, they really can't say nothing about it. Now I want you to just do this. Well, how do I do this when I never was allowed to do this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it's, it's, it's friction. It's friction in the air. You know what I mean? It's it's so much friction. It's with the kids. It's with her. It's with the, the kids' mamas. And all this is just so much friction. And guess who's in the middle of it? I'm in the middle of it, but guess what? I can't even get mad about it because I started the friction. Mm. I don't want brought the friction to the table. Mm. I brought the friction to the table. So I got to be mad enough to say, you know what? This is all my fault because I handled this situation the wrong way. I did this all the wrong way. Because I didn't know no better. Yeah. So I had to go back and apologize not only to my wife, but I had to go back and apologize to my children. Mm. I had to go back and apologize to my, my kids' mama because I did all of this the wrong way. And it caused so much friction. And where we at right now, we could have been here five years ago. But it took us to the it took us so long to get here because of a mistake that I made. Mm -hmm. And I'm man enough to say that I made that mistake. Man, I love that. I I love the accountability because there's so many men that it's just like once 
But once they move on from the child mother, they move on from the kid too. What a, what a, what a, what the thing about that? Even with that though, now you gotta now you gotta ask yourself what now you gotta ask yourself this because one thing I learned about people is they tell you who they are way before they do the stuff that they do to you. They yeah. they 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 show you who they are. That's true. Way before that, they say stuff out of their mouth that you question like. How could you say something like that? They do stuff that you question and say, how could you do something like that? But yet, you would still lay down and have a baby with them. <laughs> you would still, you, it, it sounds comical, but it's true. You're right. You know, you would still lay down and have a baby with them. So now when they show you who they really are and the stuff that you've been seeing for the last four, five years, They've been showing you who they are. Now you done made a baby with them. How did you be, how did you be flabbergasted and stuff like that about things that they done did and you just a lost for words? Like, I can't believe he did that. No, he he been showed you that. Or she been showed you that. Yeah. Because don't, because at in, in the day that we live in now, bro, ain't no courting. Mm -hmm. Ain't ain't no none of that. Ain't no dates. You know what a date is, especially in the black community. Man, we're gonna ride around, we're gonna drink on some Jose or some 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 Don Julio, and we're gonna be on the block and we're gonna do this and do that. And that's a date. We talking through, we communicate through text messages all day long. Yeah. In 30 days, we talking about we love each other. Yeah. I love you. I love you. You don't even love yourself, so how could you love him? How could you love her? But mm -hmm. since you never experienced true love, you think love is just that feeling that this person gives you at the time. They give you this at the time. Guess what? I used to be that guy. So mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I know. Man, I loved all my, I thought I loved all my baby mamas. I mm -hmm. thought I loved every last one of them. And guess what? Guess what I realized? What? I've never been in love until I met until I, until I fell in love with my wife. Mm -hmm. I've never been in love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't even love myself. Because, see, when you love yourself, when you fall in love with yourself, it's certain things that you're not going to even do to put yourself in danger. So running out there having sex with four, five different women, unprotected and all that, you putting yourself in danger. So how could you really say that you love yourself when you putting yourself in danger every single day? That's not love. You don't even love you. So I had to once once I once I got that mentor once I got in Christ and and they showed me how to love and what love really looked like and love is not pain, mm -hmm. love don't hurt, mm -hmm. love don't cheat, mm -hmm. love might make a mistake, you know. But like the Bible say, man, listen, we love the flaws. You love this person flaws, man. You love them. The love, love, it, 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 it. it what it say? Love covers the multitude of all faults. Mm -hmm. Love covers the multitude of all faults. So guess what? I can I can respect that you got faults and flaws, but I can't respect the fact that you're going out here cheating on me every day. Yeah. I can't respect that you're bringing kids into our marriage. Mm -hmm. I can forgive you for that, but that don't mean I have to deal with it. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, a, it's it's so many it's so many things that, bro, especially in our community, that we have to learn with our children. That's why I be like my my youngest daughter, my youngest child. She's thirteen years old. I be hands on with her. Mm -hmm. Fathers, the, on, on 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 Valentine's Day, I bring her flowers to her school and things like that. You know, and I I, I let her know that she beautiful every day. That you don't need no man to 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 pat you on the back and tell you you this. When 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 she get older and start dating and dude come with the flowers, she gonna say, "Man, my daddy been doing this all my life." Yeah, you not doing nothing. My daddy ain't never did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I'm out when I'm out here fighting for that bag and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, trying to trying to trying to get this bag up for for, for my man, I'm doing it for these kids. I'm doing it for my wife. I'm doing it for them. So when my daughter get older, now she don't look down on a man that don't has that. But at the end of the day, she still sets standards for herself and said, I'm not going under my standards. These are the standards that I set for me. These are the standards that my daddy knew and my daddy and my mama put in my life. And why should I have to go under those standards? Mm -hmm. Why should I have to settle? Why do black women always got to settle? I got to settle. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, man. Oh, my God. This is good. 
what what how do you create time for each child in, individually like how do you give them their own individual time like you're special you're special you're special but like, how do you, create you know what? That time? that's a great question my and my mentor taught me this my mentor taught me this every day every day i set out a time for them even if it's just for an hour we going to do this. Whatever you want to do. If you want to run around the block, if you want to play PlayStation, whatever you want to do. Because on this special day, which me and my wife, our, our date night is every Friday. So during, during the week, as my kids was younger and I got me a mentor, I started giving them so many I can't give y'all all a day because it's too many of y'all. We only seven <laughs> days in the week, you know what I'm saying? But I, but I began to give them day hours. Yeah. What you want to do in your hour? What you want to do in your hour? So we go to school, get home from work, do this, do this. So two kids might have seven o'clock. The other kid might have eight o'clock. They got to be in bed by nine. Mm -hmm. So some of the times, two of the... the Two of the kids that got their days, they just put it together and we'll go do something together. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is you have to make time. That's true. If, if, you, if you're not if you're not willing to make time for the kids, I don't care what it is, you have to make time. Time is everything. I tell people this all the time. Love is not spelled L-O-V-E. Love is spelled T-I-M-E. Time. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the work. If you want the results that you want out of your children, you have to put in the time. The quickest way to become a millionaire is invest in your child. Invest in them. And I'm not talking about PlayStation and, and Apple and Michael Jordan. That's not that's not an investment. Yeah, you invest in, in Sony. You <laughs> invest in Jordan. That's not an investment in our child. Right. You know how many, you know how many men and women out here, bro, all the time say, Man, my, my child got everything. Yeah, they got everything but your time. Yep. Got everything but your time. You don't got no time for them. Mm -hmm. you, you running around doing this, doing that, doing that, doing that. Yeah, you could provide for them. But where's the time that you put in it right now? My daughter waiting on me to take her to the swimming pool right now. She waiting on me to take her to the swimming pool right now. So oh. when we left our house and came to my brother-in-law house where I'm at right now, she said, Daddy, can I bring my swim my, my uh my swimsuit? I said, Yeah. Cause I told her I was gonna take her swimming at our house. Mm -hmm. I said, so she's daddy, can I bring? Yeah. So she guess what? When I told her I had this interview, she wait, she patiently wait. Oh, well, let me well, I, I don't wanna uh be the No, no, you good. We can we go finish this though. We go <laughs> But this I'm just saying, good. but 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 that's what I'm saying though, bro. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's things like that that me. Bro, a child don't a child don't care nothing about no Jordans and none of that. Bro, they cares less about that stuff. That's stuff that we care about. That's our image. Yeah. How do you you your your baby three years old and you don't want to do him a thousand dollar party? That's for you. <laughs> that got nothing to do with this baby. So you can put it all on social media. Yeah, my son had on Gucci and he had on this, he had on that. He three years old, he'll never remember that stuff a day in his life. Nope. That's your image. Why not just be normal? <laughs> Why not take that thousand dollars and put it in the trust fund form? Mm -hmm. Go do something, go put it in a CD form. Mm -hmm. Don't say, man, for your fifth birthday, you know what I did for you? You see how you set up right there, man? I took this $1,500. I was finna go pay for this party, and I put it in the CD for you. Yep. I put it in a bond for you. I put it in some stock. You know, but we don't, we, we're not taught that. And I'll be a lie and say that I was taught that. I was taught that as I got older and got me a mentor. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't taught that. With all the money that I done had and ran through and did foolish stuff with, Man, I'm supposed to be a multi-millionaire. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's man. like it's like with conversations like this that we having right now, mm -hmm. I hope the viewers are listening. And because like I always say in all my motivational speaking, if I could change the way you think, I could change the way you live. That's true. That is very true. And I love if I could change the way you think, I could change the way you live. That's right. 
And I, I like when you talked about uh, the time, because a lot of times this happens with because uh, I have a blended family. Right. Uh, I've, I've had a blended family in my in my my previous marriage. I have a blended family now. And even, you know, with, with, with my son, with, with his dad, you know, a lot of times it's just like, OK, y'all y'all going to you know, do this, do that or whatever. I'm like, it's about the time. You got to put in the necessary time. Kids don't care about what what you they don't. They don't remember you bought them them Jordans, those, those fives. They don't remember that. Like you said, they want your time. And because, man, my kids here. Every five minutes, they daddy, 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 let's go do you know what I'm saying? Every five minutes, they they just want your time, and that's, that's the it. memories that you create, man. And for some odd reason, we think we can buy our kids love, and that's it doesn't work like that. Because when they look back 20 years from now, kids are a long-term investment. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah. Long-term investment. And in a in a re and, and you gotta think like this. Just just ask yourself this, bro. We look at it and say, we try to buy our kids love, right? The same things our mamas and daddies try to do to us instead of spending time with us. Yep. I'll buy you a Nintendo. Yep. I'll buy you this. I'll buy you that. You know, just to, just to, now guess what? We on Nintendo all night long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ain't, ain't, long as we out they hair. Long as we out they face. You know what I mean? So it's just like, when 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 we when, when we sit down and having these children, like even with Mr. Cam Newton, when you sit down and having these children, you having them for what read? What's the purpose? What are the purpose of you having these children? Mm. Is it is it because because nine times out of ten, it ain't about sex. Because you Cam Newton, you could basically walk up <laughs> to any woman. And I ain't gonna say any woman, right. no, not to all women, because but you could the average woman, you could go have sex if that's what you're trying to do. So it can't be about that. But what's the purpose behind it? What, what what's your purpose behind that? Because it has to be a purpose if, if if that's driving you to have all these children. What was the purpose? What's your purpose behind it? What are these children gonna benefit out of just being Cam New's son? or Cam Newton daughter, or you could make sure that they going to have this in life and that in life and this in life. But at the end of the day, as you being a man, as you being a father, what are you teaching them? What values are you teaching them? Are you teaching them this is the way men are supposed to treat women? Are you teaching your daughter this the way a woman's supposed to be treated? Yeah, you could be somebody baby mama. It's okay to be somebody baby mama. Yo mama, my baby mama. You could be somebody baby daddy. You know what I'm saying? So what values are you teaching them by doing stuff like that? Because what, what, when you when you sit them down and they all at the kitchen table, and y'all all for Christmas and all this and all that, you got 10 kids, you got eight, nine, 10 baby mamas. And as they get older and older and older, now they starting to try to figure out, why didn't you never marry my mama? Mm. Why, what, was my mama not good enough for you? Because everybody's not going to follow down your path. If somebody's going to have some sense to say, was my mama not, so my mama just wasn't nothing but a baby mama, huh? Ooh. Now you got to get hit with the harsh reality. What if somebody did me like that? How would you feel? And guess what, Cam? With all due respect, you can't even, you can't even flip an eyelid if somebody did your daughter like that, if somebody did your son like that, because you dissed it out. Mm. You made them believe that's how this is supposed to be. And like I'm saying, I don't got no knock to the man preference. What he do is what he do. But okay. I'm saying you got to look at it from all angles. Look at it from all angles now. And if you can't look at it from all angles, then you're not being true to yourself. Mm, man, that is so good, man. I Because I remember, man, I remember going through my divorce and my daughter uh, at the time, at the time, my daughter was, she was like, 14 and I remember her asking me like why like why your mom getting a divorce you know and at that time when Dale I couldn't tell her exactly everything I wanted to and it was one of those seasons in my life where I was telling her when I get when you get older we can have these conversations when you get a little older my daughter is 21 now right I'm remarried and all the good stuff now my daughter and I can have those conversations. 
Exactly. And, 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 and everybody know, to those who follow me on social media, y'all know I, I will never talk bad about my, my ex-wife. Never. Because I'm like, I married her, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You exactly. Know, I, I, that's the thing I struggle with. Why are there so many people that talk bad about their baby mom or their baby dad? Like you say, you lay, let's, let's take some accountability. They didn't put a gun to your head. You said yes. Exactly. So, no. so, the, so, the, so the thing, the thing be, the thing be about it is one thing that I did learn as my growth being growing myself for the last like 10 plus years, mm -hmm. you only, you only can speak how you feel about you. Yeah. You can, you can only speak the things that you feel about yourself. Yeah. So, uh, just like I, just like I told you earlier, I, I don't, I would never look at none of my kids' mothers and say anything bad about them to nobody. And I never have, never have ever, you know, because at the end of the day, it tells a lot about me. So you hear the baby bow? <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? So you sitting here dogging and saying this and saying that, saying that. But guess what? Y'all share something in common. So you the reflection of her. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, though, bro. They don't understand that because because the the easiest thing that you could do in life is get people that's on your level to agree with you. Mm. The average person don't want nobody around them that's gonna hold them accountable. Because when 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 a person holds you accountable, they make you look at yourself. That's right. What role what what role did you play in this? Yep. We 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 gonna eliminate her, or we gonna eliminate him. Mm -hmm. What role did you play in this? What did you do that was bogus? And the average person don't want no nobody like that in their life because it make you look too deep in yourself. And the average person don't want to look deep in themselves because they want to do the blame game. They want to point the finger. Oh, my mama, when I was young, my mama did this. When I was young, my daddy went there. My went out, and that's an excuse to stay where they at. You can have a thousand excuses, not a real reason. That's true. So what's the excuse? Mm. Is you you, you, you got to quit making excuses. Mm. Okay, you did it. It is what it is. You made a mistake. It is what it is. A mistake ain't nothing but another way of doing something. You learn from it or you're going to keep going through it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Still you learn. Man, I man, I got one more question. I can talk to you all night, you know. <laughs> I, we man. Okay, so what advice do you have? So you say, I'm, I'm just giving a scenario. You have a, a, a single dad and a single mom. Uh, they have one kid apiece and they get together and they're talking about they want to get married. You know, say they've been together for a year or whatever and they come to you. What piece of advice would you give those two single parents? The, 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 the first thing I would want to know is are 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 these y'all children or this his son or this your son? Cause see, that's what's gonna that's 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 what's gonna that's what's gonna that's the that's the icebreaker right there. How do you view this child? Do you view this child and say this? No, this is my son. Rather, rather, rather. Before me and my wife even got married, her son that was already my son. You get what I'm saying? When I started dating her, when when I took my kids school shopping, I took him school shopping. Mm -hmm. When I went for for his birthdays and things like that, I did the same thing for his, him that I did for my wife's kid. I mean, for 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 my kid, right? Christmases and everything, they got the same thing because I didn't view him as oh, that's my girlfriend son. No, that's my son. Because first of all, if you don't view all kids as they your children, that's a problem already. Bro, I view every child in the world, whether I know them or not, when they in my presence, that's my child. If they mother or they father's not around, mm -hmm. that is my child. I'm going to look after this child and protect this child like I do my own. Everybody don't have that. That's true. Everybody don't have that passion. That's true. And, but the thing about it is, I, I was talking to some people about this today. When 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 the Bible tells us many are called but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. See, God chose me with a heart, bro, that I just love. 
And I'm happy he gave me that heart because I know, first of all, I know how to love children because I know how I wasn't loved as a child. Mm. So I know how to love children because I would never want a child to have to go through what I went through as a child. So if I could step in and prevent that, I want to prevent that as much as I can. So when I'm going to have these motivational speakings at the school, when I'm working in these schools and I'm doing all this and doing all that, and they saying, uh, little Johnny, he just terrible. He can't do this and do that. Well, what you see in him, I don't see in him. So even as a man and a, and a, a, a man and a woman come to me and talk to me about marriage and things like that, I don't want to hear, you know, well, his son do this and his son, his, her daughter do this and da 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 this, da 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 that. No, 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 no. You the mom, you the dad, how do y'all coincide? Mm -hmm. What do you have in you that, can, that, 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 that you can leave on this little girl? What do you have in you, sir, that you can leave on this little boy mm -hmm. in a positive manner? Yeah. It ain't always a talking about hollering and screaming out. Ah, a person don't care, bro. If a person yelled and screamed at you every day, you 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 lose contact. You just you just you just check out. Yeah. yeah. Why you can't sit me down and tell me my wrongs, son? You was wrong right here, son. Don't talk to your mama like that, daughter. Come here, let me get in the, get in the car room. Let's take a ride, man. I know I ain't your dad. But don't talk to your mama like that. She love you. She go to work every day. She busting her butt for you. You got everything. Don't do that. But you got to make them feel. You got to make them understand instead of cursing them. Because guess what? You cursing them out. Guess what you do? You look just like her now to you. To her. You look just like her mama. Yep. <laughs> then you got to go back. Now you got to go back and tell the mama. Because the mama going to ask you or the daddy going to ask you, well, how you? You get how you get little Johnny, how you get little Tiffany to 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 talk to you and do like that, sweetheart. Your daughter love you, baby boy. Your your son love you, but you you got to deliver the message a little bit softer. Yeah, yep, yep. Just deliver the message a little bit so it's okay to be their dad, but it's still okay to be their friend too. But we just take the friendship. Part, you just don't let it cross boundaries. Now you set boundaries with the friendship part, but at the end of the day, stop. You can't always just be like that. It's okay to laugh with your kids. Yeah. It's okay to play with your kids. It's okay to do all that. It ain't every time you got to see them, oh, that's mama, that's daddy. And it's just now we in the military. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I, I play with all my kids. My, my man, my wife will tell you, man, all he do is play from the time he get up to the time. All he do is play. He just played. Yeah. But the thing, what, what I understand is, bro, I never got that as a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I understand being around my mentors and things like that and watching them interact with their wives and their children and like that. Bro, life's supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. Guess what? It ain't always going to go the way that you want it to go, but it shouldn't always just be, oh, man, life is just terrible. Because when you carry that spirit and you carry that energy, it goes through the entire house. Not everybody got that energy. Yes. Everybody got that spirit. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So as a mother, is a, is a is it a father or mother out there that's that's looking to blend the family? Man, you love them children like they your own, whether they yours or not. Mm -hmm. If you and him, if you and him broke up tomorrow, why why did you stop communicating with the little boy? Man, this is I'm I'm so glad you said that because even with my ex wife and I. Uh, you know, you know, we we cordial, you know what I'm saying? It's, Cause I mean our kid, you know, my our daughter's grown, so it's like whatever. Right. But she had because we had a blended family then, <clears throat> and her son, even to this day, me and him, we still cool. You know what I'm saying? Me and him, we we still be chatting. Hey man, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Happy birthday. Hey, how's the family? Boom, boom. Like we still cool. And that's something that I man, I wear that as a badge of honor. Even though me and his mom didn't make it. We are still cool as, you know, I'm, I'm still his dad. And he told me one day, he was like, man, you've done more for me than my biological dad has ever done. And man, that and that's, that's what's up, bro. And I give you two thumbs up for that because my wife, like my, my, like my wife's son, I've been, he, he just graduated from the Navy, um, mm -hmm. like two weeks ago. Um, and, um, I've been in his life since he was four years old. He's 18 now. Wow. And one thing that I always tell him, his dad never been there. And I always tell him this. I say, son, let me tell you something. Forgive him. 
I never say nothing bad about his dad to him. Man, you forgive that man. You you sit down and you talk to him. You have a conversation with him. See what it is. I never allow you to be disrespectful. So when you saying things like that, like even when me and my wife was boyfriend and girlfriend and we have our separations at time, I never separated from him. I never separated from him. Yeah. I text him every day like I do all my kids every morning before all my kids go to school. Well, I only got two in school now. Uh, everybody else done graduated from high school and all that. I I I sent him a text, man. Be great today, be a leader today. I, I did the same thing to him. Even with me and my me and my wife, when we was boyfriend and girlfriend, and we'd go our separate ways for a little time. I still because I didn't. I don't love you because I'm with your mama. <laughs> I, I got to know you because I was with your mama, right. but I fell in love with you because you a kid, and I view you as my son. So if I view you, you, you as my son, just because me and your mama not together, so I just walk away from you. Mm. Mm. That's the that's the trauma right there. Yep. Now I done started some trauma, and his life is already his biological dad not there. Now the man that he thought was, you know, he looked at as a father figure, he done walked away. So guess what? He gonna look at all men. All men gonna always walk away from me. Yep. They always gonna walk away from me. Yep. No, I'm I always love you. You're mm -hmm. gonna always be my boy. Mm -hmm. You know? I love that, man. I love that so much. Yeah, because we and we need more stories like that, right? We need so when when your son, when he's older, he can tell somebody else about how you was there for him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. How you broke you broke that cycle. I want to um I want to because I want to make sure I honor your time, man. It's been an hour already. Can wow. you yeah, right. You know, we get on here, man. We we get right. <laughs> can you tell us about your book? Um, you know, you don't want to tell everything because it's you know, we want to make sure to get it. I'll have it in the description below, but just kind of give a quick synopsis of what to expect when people get to purchase your book. So um my book, The Devil Thought He Had Me, Volume One and Two. Um, it's just a it's a book about my life. Um, growing up in the city of Chicago, um, no no mother and father, no guidance. Um, joining the gang at an early age and just going through life not knowing. Just going through life not knowing, overcoming obstacles and um, near-death experiences and things like that. Um, one thing I would tell the viewers, um, I was kidnapped, put in the trunk, left for dead for drugs and money. Um, you know, at, at the age of 18 years old. So um, when I laid in that hospital bed for them six and a half weeks, seven weeks, it was like God spoke to me right then and there. And I told myself I wanted to I wanted to make sure no other child ever been through, go through nothing that I've been through. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to do it then, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and like I said, man, I speak highly of my mentors because it was is because of because of God and because God put them in my lives that helped me change my life around. Um, if you if if you have a son or a daughter that's out here and you seem to can't, you know, connect with them, man, find them a mentor. Yeah. And, and and one thing about a mentor, a person don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Find them somebody that care about them. That's true. Find, yeah. find them somebody that really cares about them and going to tell them the truth and hold them accountable. Mm hmm. And my book is just based off, it's just based off, if, if, if whoever buys the book and reads the book, you can get it on Amazon, Wendell White, The Devil Thought He Had Me, Volume 1 and 2. And it just shows you, man, the things that I've been through, the things that I had to persevere through uh, from from as a child, mm -hmm. as, as, as 9 and 10 years old. You know, it's always been rough. But one thing that I do know, man, the rough days set me up for the sunny days. So right now, man, I'm, I'm I'm reaping the benefits of those rough days. And now I get to go out and tell my testimony to people all over the country, you know. And 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 one thing about me, man, I don't I really don't like doing nothing for money. I do it for free. Just to, if I could save one soul, if I could save one little boy, one little girl from not going to the penitentiary for the rest of their life or going out there getting themselves killed or, you know, not not being a teen mother or teen father, if I could help them in that way. That's what I do, man. I love I love working with the youth, man. That's my passion. Yeah. Like if I if I could just help them in so many different ways, like I that I strive every day to get up to just help these babies, mm -hmm. you know, be better. Yeah. And man, it's it's just it's 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 a real deep book. Mm -hmm. 
both both books is a real deep book and it's just gonna take you down through my life it's gonna take you and show you where i had to come from and and, and people that read this book that's listening right now they gonna come back and listen listen to this podcast again and they gonna they they not gonna even believe it like man that's the same dude like that's the same dude but you know man with god everything is possible man anything is possible man Amen. keep praying for your babies man i don't care what they going through i don't care what what they going through. I don't care if they incarcerated, if, if somebody's saying they got ADHD, whatever it is, man, you keep praying for your baby. You keep believing in your baby. And man, you keep you keep speaking those affirmations over your child life every day. You wake up and tell your kid how great he is every day, how proud of a mama or proud of a dad that you are to be their father, their mother. Man, you don't let never, never let nobody tell you what your child is. No, your child is the best. Your child is amazing. I don't care, man. Thomas Edison, man, when when he came home with the with the note taped to his back and the teacher said he was unable to learn and then he asked his mama what the note say. She said, son, that you the smartest person in the world. And look at him. Thomas Edison everywhere over the world right now. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. man, you don't never let nobody tell you, man, what your child is and ain't. You draw the narrative. But at the end of the day, you got to understand these children like sponges, they're going to pick up after you. So if you doing this in front of them and doing that in front of them, you can't get mad when they do it because guess what? They got it from their mama. They got it from their daddy. You know what I'm saying? So you got to you gotta hold yourself accountable and check yourself and say, no, nah, man, I can't smoke no blunts in here. My, 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 my little man up in here, he he up in here doing his homework. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't have all these these guys around my young daughter. You know what I'm saying? Because when I go to the bathroom, somebody might say something to her. But no, listen, no, that. So as men, as, as, as mothers and fathers, man, we got to protect our children, man. We got to protect them more. We got to protect them better. We got to hold ourselves accountable so they can understand and see what accountability look like. So then when we try to hold them accountable, they'll receive the accountability instead of saying, well, you don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. man, this was good, though, bro, man. I appreciate this, man. This was good, man. For sure. You know, as always, man, we always have a great time every time we connect. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you on social media. Man, I'm on I'm on Instagram, Wendell uh, underscore W24. Man, email me. I mean, uh, you can you can you can send me a DM. Um, women, I'm letting you know that my wife she she's on my page. She 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 got she connected to my uh, Instagram. So if you say anything crazy, she gonna respond. You know what I'm saying? Cause she is it's it, it's connected to her phone as well. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want no foolishness. I don't want none of the foolishness. But man, if you got any questions. If you got any questions that concerning your child or anything like that, man, man, hit me up, man, and I'll try to help you the best way I can. You know, especially my my fellas, man, man, don't be, don't never get to the place where you feel like, you know, don't nobody understand you, don't nobody care, bro. I've been there. You know what I'm saying? I've been down that road. You was, I was that once that father that thought I could just buy everything and I didn't have to be present. You know, so somebody taught me different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, man, we all make mistakes. We just got to learn from them. And mm -hmm. the mistakes that we make, man, you know what? A lot of it is generational curses that we take on and we don't know no better. But, man, when you get around people that know better, reach out to those people. Reach out to those resources. You know what I'm saying? Reach out to your resources and, and, and ask for help. That's why the Bible says it takes a village to raise a child because it's going to take more than just you, man. It's going to take more than just you, sweetheart. Y'all going to need some help. You know, you can't tell everybody, man, that's not your mama. You ain't got to listen to him. That's not your daddy. You ain't got to listen to him. No, he going to have to listen because guess what? You're going to have to listen somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to listen somewhere. You're going to either you gonna listen out here in these streets or you're going to listen behind that jail cell. And ain't no listening if you in that grave. You know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it real, bro. So, man, you got to you gotta let people be a part of your village. You know, you got to you got to you got to put people in your village that you trust and that you know that's going to do right by you and your child and they're going to be willing to tell you the truth and tell your child the truth and you and but tell you the truth in love and tell the child the truth in love that's the whole thing it ain't always going to be about hollering and screaming about making a point and i gotta be right and i gotta be wrong it ain't about that it's about man can we get an understanding and all that getting get an understanding do i understand you do you understand what I'm trying to do? I'm holding you accountable because I love you, not because I want to see nothing happen to you. 
accountability is just another thing that that's another way of loving a person you know what i'm saying just man i love you enough to tell you bro we're not gonna do that bro i see more than you you better than that you know what i'm saying so man it's been good man it's been it's been this been the good man it's been good oh yeah man you know we connected man thanks for again for yes, accepting the invite man Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Wendell. As you know, as you can see, the man has wisdom. I will have his book linked up in the description. So if you want to make that purchase, it will be in the description below. And also, uh, if you if you watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, share this with a friend, because you never know who might need this. I always tell people. In your group chat, send this link in your group chat to all your friends because the, you, this will spark a uh, conversation for real. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We'd we'll love to hear from you. By doing so, it'll put you in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heineman with special guest Wendell White, and we are out. <laughs>